So I said, we, what we have to do is, is make them look as similar as we can, um, which should be possible because I am the same person. Um, <laughs> And, and so I muddled up all the clothes and m tried to make the makeup the same and that sort of thing, um, and found an internal way to make them different so that they felt very different. Well, for David Cronenberg's terrific Dead Ringers in 1988, you're paired famously with yourself, um, playing twin gynecologists, each with very distinct personalities. Did you learn something about your, your craft, your technique, from, in a way, acting with yourself? Did you learn anything about your own style? Um, not really. I, I learned a little bit about tricks and, 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 and how all the good tricks are very simple. I think any, any magician would tell you that. Um, at base, they're simple, but they dazzle you when you don't know how they're done. And, uh, and I remember coming to, uh, to start work on, on uh, Dead Ringers, and we went out the week before on separate days to buy separate clothes for the separate characters, and they built me two dressing rooms. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I think I shared makeup artists. I think I had the same makeup as doing me both. But uh, and and then uh, we shot for a couple of days, and then we watched the rushes uh, at the end of the second day. And I looked and I I said to David, "This is a disaster. They're completely different. I mean, no one would ever com ever muddle them." Uh, and that was an important part of the story that the audience actually were at times not sure which was which, which was so with the Mantle Brothers, who it was based on, the New York gynecologists, and I've spoken to people who went to them, who were there, you know, went to them, and, and they said, I, we were never quite sure who we were seeing. Um, so the, we knew we were true to life, but I thought this is, as I say, a disaster. So I said, we, what we have to do is, is make them look as similar as we can, um, which should be possible because I am the same person. Um, <laughs> And, and so I muddled up all the clothes and m tried to make the makeup the same and that sort of thing, um, and found an internal way to make them different so that they felt very different. And uh, it was an internal energy spot. Very, very simple trick. Those, those of you who are um, yes, who act. I mean, one, one I put the, 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 I mean, I shouldn't tell you this because magicians don't. Um, <laughs> but but uh, one of them, I put my, um, my energy point here for, 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 for Elliot. Um, the smooth one, the operator, the uh, the guy, because this is where you headbutt people. You're very, very powerful here. Um, and the other, I put his energy point here, which is where you can be killed and gets, and it's very delicate and uh, more feminine. And when you put your energy there, everything changes. Something changes in your eyes, changes in your posture, changes in how you speak. So I was able just to switch from one to the other between takes because we would go, we would record one side and then I'd go and change and we'd record the other side. Um, and I didn't have to do any, um, you know, any more preparation than that. It was just literally flicking a switch. And then, of course, when you play one of the brothers pretending to be the other brother, then you keep the energy the same. You don't move that, but you try and pretend to be the other brother but the audience can tell because they see where you're at, they feel you're different. I mean, it sort of works. Anyway, simple trick. Um, so that taught me that, but it didn't tell me about um, anything about my technique. I know nothing about my technique. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I start every film and play feeling like a plumber, <laughs> um, that I'm completely out of my depth and, um, and I want to go home. <laughs> I don't know too many plumbers who could turn in so many amazing performances. <laughs> I'm so glad you gave that little back, uh, backstage magician's trick. Of That's a fantastic little little bit of information, the mm. energy mm. going from there to there. 1990s reversal of fortune, of course, uh, ended that decade on such a terrific high note. That did win you the Academy Award for Best Actor. I know the voice... Not a BAFTA, though. <laughs> The, I know the voice, Klaus von Bülow's voice, was, uh, was a trick for you to get that. What were some of the other parts of Klaus von Bülow that, that helped you unlock that role? Klaus was a tough one because when I was originally asked, I thought it was a bit sort of National Enquirer. I thought, you know, they're all alive still. I mean, Sonny hardly, but, but the, the children uh, and Klaus. And I thought, why do we want to, you know, they've been through a difficult time. Why do we want to pull all this on the screen. And so I, I just thought it was rather bad taste and uh, turned it down. And Glenn, who wanted to play Sonny, um, persuaded me eventually you know, to do it. And I think she was probably right. Um, but I found it very difficult to get into class because A, he's, quite, he's bigger than me. He doesn't, you know, he's a big Dane. 
and um, I didn't really feel like him. And I thought, I don't know, I don't, I can't get inside this. I can't get inside this. I watched him. I watched him on Barbara Walters and and uh, various other interviews he'd done because he was quite a he was quite the thing, wasn't he, yeah. during the trial? I mean, people love an enigma. They love they love to ask to dinner somebody who maybe has murdered his wife. It's exciting, <laughs> you know. And so Klaus, who who is a great weekend guest, a great uh, high liver, um, loves to be the center of uh, of everything. Um, enjoyed all of that and 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 blossomed. And I thought, oh, okay, well, this, this I still don't like that quality very much. Uh, I, I talked to John Richardson, who was a great friend of his, the the art, the novelist and art critic, um, who said to me, "Play him like a bad actor." And I said, "Thanks a lot." <laughs> <laughs> so how do I do that? I don't know. Um, uh, and uh, eventually I thought to myself, well, wait a minute, what's he done? He's been accused of trying to, in to kill his wife by injecting her with insulin. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But uh, it's, he's got himself into deep water and he's having to go through this televised trial and uh, uh, it took sort of months. And I suddenly thought, what would my father, let's just say that he had made some huge mistake or tripped up in his life and, and got into this situation, how would he deal with it? And I thought, well, he'd deal with it with charm and, and he'd sort of just get through it. Um, and I thought, well, I'm very like my father, so if I just play it like that. And I sort of got into him that way. Um, and of course had to make up my mind whether or not I had tried to kill my wife by injecting her with insulin and looked at Klaus and thought would he or wouldn't he um, looked at the reality of the situation looked at how happy Sonny was with him looked at how uh, uh, cross Sonny was when she when he brought her back from her first suicide attempt um, and came to conclusions, and then played him, um, and never met him until about three years after. And, and he, he sent like a series of postcards or something to you, right? Didn't he send something? I'm well, he used to send me, because you see, I had to do, trouble with the, this acting business is you have to sell the stuff. So I had to do interviews. And you know, you're doing interview about a character you played, you, you, you sort of know that character, you are that character, and you talk about him with great authority. But that character existed. <laughs> and so I get these postcards, closely written postcards from Klaus saying, I do not think that, I am not like that, I do not believe that. <laughs> and um, finally, well, I, finally I did meet him at, at, at Paul Getty's, who was a great friend of his and supporter. And uh, I went down to a cricket match. It, Paul is a neighbor of mine. Uh, in or was dead now uh, in Oxfordshire in England and uh, we used to have Sunday uh, summer Sunday cricket matches and my son who was at that age about 11 uh, wanted to get a footballer's auto autograph and the footballer was playing cricket that day so I said well look we'll go down and we'll have a cup of tea in the interval because they used to break for a nice tea you know Paul was not short of a few bob and um, I said, I'll get the interview, I'll get the uh, autograph for you. So I go down and Paul greets me in the pavilion and says, look, uh, uh, Klaus von Bülow is in the house. If he's looking at the library and I know you've never wanted to meet him, but so I, I won't mind if you scuttle off. And I felt it was three years after I made the movie. So I thought, no, no, no it'd be great to meet him now, it'd be fine. So we stayed to get the autograph and I was looking out the, they hadn't broken for tea yet. I was w looking out of the pavilion at the match, and I heard this voice behind me. There was a back door to the pavilion, and the voice, a voice said, um, "You see, I'm not fat." And I said, "No, no, no, no." I, I, I turned around. To Klaus. I said, I, "I never said you were fat. I said you were bigger than me, which you are. You're a bigger man than me. I'm quite slight in comparison." <laughs> and um, he said, "Oh," and, and we went and sat down on a bench uh, overlooking the cricket, and um, uh, he said. Uh, uh, have you ever have you uh, seen Alan Dershowitz lately? Alan Dershowitz was the lawyer who got him off. Uh, I said, no, I haven't seen Alan, played by Ron Silver. Sadly, the late Ron Silver played him in the movie. I said, I haven't seen Alan since we opened the movie, three years ago, whatever. 
um, he said, oh, he said, I, I understand he's representing Leona Helmsley and Michael Tyson at the moment. I said, yes, I, I'd read that in the papers, yes. He said, you haven't been asked to play either of them, have you? <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I said I felt Michael Tyson was slightly beyond my range, but I'd have a crack at Leona. 